second mark of the church is that she is holy. Now what could this mean? This mark of holiness is a rather mysterious concept, and it can also be understood in multiple ways. First, the church is holy in herself. Second, the church is holy in her members. And third, the church is holy in her actions and effects. Now regarding the first, in herself, the church is holy because she is the mystical body of Christ Jesus himself. She is animated by the Holy Spirit given at Pentecost, unified by the Holy Spirit, and can thus be considered holy. The church's holiness ought not be understood as the mere sum total of the good works of her members, but rather the holiness is first and foremost the holiness she receives from her head. Now regarding the second, the church is holy in her members since the holiness of Jesus, her head, flows into the grace, merits, and works of her members. The church is composed of innumerable great saints throughout history, men and women who have given their all for the sake of following Jesus. But lastly, the church is holy in her actions, since she contains within herself and distributes to her members all the means by which they may grow in holiness. Through her charism of infallibility, she teaches her children how to live the moral life necessary for growth in holiness. And through the sacraments, she distributes to her children all the graces necessary for them to truly live a life in union with God, a life worthy of the holiness to which they are called. Simply put, the church is holy because she is a saint-making machine. She freely distributes to all her children all they need to live as the children of God they are called to be. There is nothing necessary for salvation that is somehow not contained within the church and given by the church to her members. Yes, it is true that outside the church, there are good people doing good things. After all, all of God's creation is good. But this does not mean that the church herself is somehow lacking in the gifts necessary for her members to grow in holiness, or that her members must somehow go outside of her bounds to supplement what the church is lacking within. Now, it's true, we must also acknowledge, it is sad that not all of her members make full use of the means of salvation. Many Catholics throughout history have done very evil things. Yet, in spite of this, the church retains the mark of holiness, since within her, the faithful lack nothing needed for true union with God. Brothers and sisters, keep studying. This is Father Brad Elliott for the Western Dominican Province.